Greetings everyone! My name is Leia and welcome to the Control Art Modeling series. In previous videos we've created the boy's upper and lower body. In this video we are going to finish the body with modeling the hands. I'm working in program Autodesk Maya 2019 but you can also model in older versions. Don't forget you can find and download all of the resources of this lesson in the link in the description. Right, let's go and continue our modeling. Now that we have the body, we need to create hands. We will insert a completely new image for the hands because we really need top view to model them properly. And as you can see, none of the drawn references have a good view or useful view of the boy's hands. So first, I'll hide everything away. If some objects are not in the layers, just select them or groups in the outline, then right-click on the layer and select Add Selected Objects. I'll lock the layers. Go to Create and select Free Image Plane. Let's go to the Attribute Editor and click on the map at Image Name. Because I've placed the image in the Source Images map beforehand, I will just select it there. Select it and open it. Now, rotate the image for 90 degrees so it lays on grid, then rotate it so it becomes boy's right hand. Unhide the jacket layer. And you can see the hand is way too big for the body. Scale it down a bit, then position it. Use top view to do so. You can put the image on the reference layer or create a completely new layer. That's up to you. Select the image, click on the layer icon with the circle, name the layer, pick a color and lock it. Let's switch to two view panels and set the view on the left to top. We will create a hand by first creating a finger, then duplicating the created finger and scaling it, and then creating a base for the hand. To start making a hand, create a cube and press free to smooth it. Go to Modify, Convert and apply Smooth Preview with Smooth Mesh Preview to polygons. Delete every second edge loop on all sides so that we are left with four faces on each side, like this. You can delete half of it and move the other half to the tip of the index finger and scale it down. Now extrude it in a straight line towards the hand. Rotate the finger and press 4 to go into wireframe display. The finger is still too big for the hand, so let's scale it on all axes, then in length. Press D to select pivot point and hold V to snap it to the tip of the finger and change the pivot orientation to object. Set the pivot orientation in the move tool to world if it's not set already and move the finger above the reference image. I'll change the pivot orientation to world in scale tool as well and I will make the finger flatter so it doesn't resemble sausage so much. When you position the finger, we will make two cuts for knuckles. Enable multi-cut with disabled edge flow and make them. Now the knuckles need edge loops on each side so the finger will be able to bend. Select both of them and bevel them. In the poly bevel window, set fraction so that the two edges encompasses each knuckle. On my side, it's around 0.4-ish, but for you it may be different. Change segments to 2. Now we will rotate these outer edge loops like we've done on the boy's elbows and knees. Set the pivot orientation in the Rotate tool to Object. Hold Ctrl Shift to activate Transform Constraint and rotate them that at the bottom they're closer and at the top they're further apart. Select the middle edge loops of the knuckles Turn off Transform Constraint if you enabled it there, then lift them up. Do the same to the side edge loops. Let's add another edge loop in the middle of the finger, snap the pivot point to the top of the finger and scale it down. Do the same to other knuckles. When you're done, make the fingertip a bit sharper. The fingertips aren't so round at the top as because, well, they're straight because of the nails. Select those two edges and pull them forward and bottom two a bit back. Now scale the finger in the width. If you look at your fingers, you can see they are not of the same width along the length. Set the pivot orientation to object in scale tool and scale the loops. 
Let's see. Squish the finger at the top a bit. I think the finger should be okay. Snap the pivot point to the start of the finger. Now we will copy and modify the fingers. When you move them, make sure there is a small space between them. Because the hand on the reference has slightly bent fingers, pay attention to position fingers at where they grow from the hand. Create a base of the hand. So, create a cube and scale it to form the palm. I'll scale the fingers out at the end a bit. Okay, let's make three cuts into the palm so we will have four divisions. Hold Ctrl Shift to activate Snap Step when making cuts. We should have one division for each finger. Select all vertices to scale the hand to the size of the wrist and move the other vertices to the fingers. Select them while dragging and holding left click. Your palm should look something like this. Make a vertical cut into the hand so we get a face loop around the knuckles. Then hold Ctrl Shift to activate Snap Step and make horizontal cuts. Before we had four faces, now we should have eight faces on top of the hand. We did these extra cuts so we will be able to connect the fingers to the hand. The palm is very square in comparison to the fingers, so let's scale edges in height at the area where fingers will connect to the palm. We want those areas to be circular. Well, we can scale other vertical edges too. Add another cut into the knuckles. This time I've enabled edge flow. I'll lift everything up a bit and make another cut into the palm, but disable edge flow for this and scale it. Make another cut on the side and adjust the palm a bit. Now we will connect the fingers to the palm, but we will go each by each. Select the index finger and the palm and isolate them in perspective view panel. Delete these four faces on the palm. We need the opening here so we can connect finger to it. Position the finger, then select them both and combine them. Now they are one object. The palm is still a bit too thick in height. Or is the finger too thin? Hmm. I'll just scale the finger in height. Problem partially solved. I will also delete other faces that are behind the fingers and adjust the thickness of the palm. We're ready to connect the index finger to the hand. Select opposing two edges and use bridge to connect them with a face. Go around the finger and bridge everything you can. And there we go. Finger is connected to the hand. Select the middle finger, position it and scale it in height, just like we scaled index finger before. Make sure the fingers are not clipping into one another, so move vertices out of the way. When done, select both of them and combine them again. Then bridge the top and bottom part of the finger. Leave the hole between fingers for now. Let's connect fingers to the hand first. Do the same to other two fingers, position them, scale them in height, combine them with a palm and bridge them to it, then adjust the mesh. Make sure that fingers are not clipping with one another. Our hand should look something like this. Hmm, not too shabby actually. Let's turn our attention to the hole between the fingers. This will be easy to fill as there is even number of edges. Select two opposing edges on top and bridge them, then do the same to the bottom. Enable multi-cut and hold Ctrl Shift to add a vertical cut exactly in the middle. Repeat this on all other holes. After you're done, select target weld and merge loose vertices to the palm. If this happened to you, like it happened to me that some other vertices got merged as well, what you can do is first left click in empty space and then select the vertice you wish to weld. Sometimes it happens that Maya remembers vertices you've selected previously and they also react to the tool. When you have welded everything, we will delete edge loops at the start of the finger and create new cuts with a multi-cut. We will do this because we want a nice transition from the palm or knuckles towards the fingers. So select the edge loop and delete it. Then select multi-cut and make sure that you have edge flow enabled. 
Do this on all fingers. You can slide the vertices to make it even smoother. Select the vertices on top of the knuckles and raise them up a bit to give them a bit of a volume, as well as to the knuckles. Use soft selection to do this. I'll make fingers a bit thicker and give the palm a bit of thickness under the knuckles. Let's soften the edges on the model. Go to Mesh Display and select Set to Face first, then Soften Edge. Ah, looking much better. We can also delete these faces on the hand as we don't need them. We will connect the hand to the arm with extrusions from this edge loop, but we will do that at the end when the hand will have all the fingers. So, we could make a thumb out of scratch, but we don't have to. What we will do is select the entire index finger, then go to Edit Mesh and select Duplicate. Select the finger, center the pivot and move it to where the thumb is on the reference. You can see on the reference that while other fingers are facing upwards, the thumb is slightly rotated to the side. You can also see this on your own hand. Rotate and scale the thumb. Then we can delete what was the third knuckle away. Set the pivot orientation to object and rotate the thumb to the side. Make sure it's below the hand. Now we need to connect the thumb to the hand. Select it and the hand. Go to Mesh and combine them. Select these four faces on the hand and let's extrude them. Scale them to the reference. From here we will connect the thumb to the hand, so just delete them. Select the edge loop at the opening with a double left click Hold Shift and double left click the edge loop on the thumb and bridge them. Let's insert two edge loops to the new faces with multi-cut, with the edge flow on and adjust them a bit. The thumb feels a bit flat on the inside of the palm, so I'll fatten it up with soft selection. I'll delete the previously created knuckles that were a part of the index finger and create new divisions. We want to add another edge loop into his palm in this area to fix the connection of the thumb to the hand. For that, delete these two edge loops on the thumb. If we want to insert the edge loop, we need the loop not around the palm, but around the thumb. We will have to make our own cut. Let's start the cut from here. Hold Ctrl Shift to activate Snap Step and I'll have the edge flow enabled. Cut around the palm and then go around the thumb like so. We have a five gone and a triangle under the thumb, so cut a vertex into the triangle, then connect the vertices of the triangle and the five gone. Then slide the vertex a bit. Now there are three quads. The same is on the top. Make a cut into triangle, connect vertices and slide the vertex. Now slide the vertices around the base of the thumb to make a better transition and vertices are more evenly spaced. I've skipped a little bit into the future where I've already created the forearm and connected the hand to the body and while doing that I've noticed that the hand alone has around 1200 triangles. That means 2,400 triangles for both hands and that's almost half of triangles that his entire body has now. At the start of the course I've said that we will model the boy suitable for mobile applications so in general it's a good practice to optimize everything as you progress. And also try to keep yourself within the 5,000 to 10,000 faces for the entire character model if you're making them for mobile applications. If you wish, you can keep the hand as it is, but I will trim it a bit. I'll change the fingers from octagons to hexagons and make adjustments to the inside of the palm. This is the hand that I have at this moment, and it shouldn't be so much different from yours except, well, for the wrist and the forearm I've made. Let's select all of the edge loops that go through the middle of the fingers. Then press Ctrl Delete to delete out edges and its vertices. Because we deleted those edge loops out, the knuckles and fingers at the start are a bit flat, 
so raise them up a bit. Turn the view to the bottom of the palm and let's make a cut so we get line between the thumb and the rest of the palm. Then add vertices to these new edges at the middle. We need to turn thumb from octagon to hexagon as well. Select the edge loop that goes through it and delete it out. Adjust the vertices on the hand and thumb so they are evenly spaced out. Now, because we deleted the edge loop out, we are left with two five gons, one at the top, other at the bottom. To break them, you will have to delete some edge loops away and create new ones. You will have to play around a bit, but at the end, my hand looks like this after all adjustments. The finger has some triangles. If you cannot avoid them, like I couldn't, make sure that the triangles are not at the joint areas. Extrude the hand to form the forearm and add edge loops to the wrist area. Adjust the vertices at the forearm so you get a circular shape and spread them out evenly. We will connect this part of the arm to the jacket. Select the hand and the jacket. If the jacket is unlocked layer, unlock it. Then go to mesh and combine them. Let's select the faces at the inside of the sleeve and the forearm and isolate them. I'll select the faces that were connecting the hand to the jacket before. Before bridging, make sure that the edge loops are in the same position. Now let's bridge the hand. Select opposing edges and press bridge. Make final adjustments and there we go, we have an arm. But you can see we're missing the hand on the other side. What we will do is delete a part of his left hand, duplicate his right hand and scale it to the other side. Delete the left arm up to his elbows, then hold left click and drag it to select the right arm up to his elbows. Go to Edit Mesh and select Duplicate. Select the duplicated hand and the center pivot should be at the center of the grid. If it isn't, move the pivot there. Let's freeze the object by going to Modify and selecting Freeze Transformation. Also, delete history. We could duplicate the arm, but we don't have to. What we can do is simply type minus 1 into the scale X in the channel box. We have the arm exactly where we want it. After this, freeze the arm again. We need to join the arm to the body, so select both of them and go to Mesh to combine them. But only because we've combined them, it doesn't mean the vertices are also joined together. Let's go closer to the elbow. We have to select vertices and merge them together, because right now what we have is two vertices, one from the jacket and other from the hand, overlapping. They are touching, but they are not connected. Press 4 to go into wireframe display. Hold left click and drag the mouse to select the vertices. When you've selected all of them, go to Edit Mesh and select Merge. Set the Merge Threshold to 0.1 or 0.01. If we now move this edge loop, we can see the vertices were merged successfully. Go to Mesh Display and select Set the Face, then Soften Edge. Great! We have finished the body. We're ready to move on to start modeling the head. In the next video, we will create his face and then his skull. If you've liked this video guide so far, please feel free to check out our YouTube channel for other guides. Follow us on social media to see what we're up to. And until next time, I wish you all happy modeling. See you soon.